trains. Clickety clack, clickety clack. Now we slick their trains. Yay! Oh, 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 we've started. Oh, we've started. Oh, hang on, hang on. Put that stuff away. Put that away. episode of the B-Train Podcast. Yes, we're very excited to be here. It's going to be our Thanksgiving long weekend special here in Canada. Yes, we're very excited. And, um, well, it's Friday in the office and um, Mr. Hankey said that it was take your kid to work day. So he brought his two little, his children with him. They're really little, just little shits, but they're actually quite nice and adorable if you keep an eye on them. But um, actually, um, it's not take your kid to work. He just said that so he could fuck off and go to the casino or somewhere and left them here with us. And we're kind of on a skeleton crew here. We're having problems with the teleprompter, seeing, seeing all the notes. We may have to go off to, to find them. But either way, we're glad to be here for our 34th episode. It's exciting. And we got a little train there. It's a blue comet train that used to run from New York City to Atlantic City. It was a very classy way to go to the casinos and fancy very nice but um anyway um well it's been an interesting week um tiff ended a few weeks ago and absolutely no one would interview with us all the humans look down on us they're like oh why should we talk to them when when you know when they they shit standing up and it's like fuck you we shit standing we choose to shit standing up we could shit standing down or sitting down like humans, look, I could just squat back and I could do that, but it's not very efficient for us. It's more efficient for us to shit standing up. We, you know, grass goes in the front, shit goes out the back. It's way more efficient. Wait, wait a second. What, what? Actually, I saw some humans shitting standing up. Oh, yes, but that's on Queen Street. That's perfectly normal on Queen Street. You'll see humans shitting themselves on Queen Street all the time. It's no big deal. Oh, yeah, that's a good point, yes. But, um... I thought that downtown was supposed to be posh and expensive. Oh, no, no, no. What they do is they just take a shitty area and they say, oh, it's posh and expensive when it's just the same shithole it was. Oh, like gentrification. Exactly. Gentrification. That's what, um, that's what they do. So, um, wow. Yeah. So no one at Tiff talked to us, but, um, whatever. So we shit standing up and some humans do the same thing. They copy us, I guess, I suppose, I guess. But um, anyway, let's, um, you know, it's interesting because um, last episode we talked about our train set. But this time everyone keeps asking us about the Barbie movie. Seriously, they want to know our opinion. Look, look at this message coming in the printer. <laughs> look. Michael from Waterloo says, why didn't you review the Barbie movie? Did you like it or not? And then, and then, oh, look at this other one, look at this other one. <laughs> Do a review of the Barbie movie. What are you afraid of? Joe R. in Austin, Texas. Well, fine, fine, oh, fine, yeah. Get that, get that hand out of the way. Yeah. We're not afraid of doing a review of the Barbie movie, but there's just, we wanted to avoid all the stupid controversy. All the people on the left say they love it, and the wankers on the right hate it, like like Ben Shapiro was burning Barbies. Oh, Ben Shapiro, what an asshole. Well, yes, but, you know, we just want to avoid all the bullshit, and fine, we'll review the movie. So, first of all, we liked the movie, and we're going to provide a socio-cultural analysis of the Barbie movie from a manifest perspective. So, first thing is, I like the movie, and, um, well, the reason I liked it is because it examined the individual actor's role in the uh, dichotomy that you see between structure and agency. And yes, and it went beyond the superficial narrative of the patriarchy oppressing women, and it examined the broader social dominant discourse that also oppresses men, as they showed how Ken felt disenfranchised and experienced a state of normlessness, which is called anomie. That explains why he acted like a douche. That explains why lots of people act like douches, and they don't even realize it. And, um, yeah, and what I like is that it took a broader look at society from a top-down, macro-structural functionalistic approach where it examines structure and how it created Barbie and Ken and the associated power dynamics. Yes, yes, and I like the uh, bottom-up macro-analysis it had using a symbolic interactionist perspective as the characters became self-aware and consciously chose 
uh, to act the way they did with an internal locus of control versus the passive external locus of control that they had before. Oh, kind of like Abraham Maslow. Yes, kind of like Maslow. Don't you think Maslow's uh, model's a bit uh, too static? Oh, that's a little bit too deep for this show. I'll just, yeah, I get, I get, yes, and Maslow in there. All sorts of interesting things. So I can, I can totally get into that. So, um, yes, that's why we like the uh, Barbie movie. And um, what else would you say? Would you say that the characters, you know, how they woke up, that they became woke? No, 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 they didn't become woke. They simply became self-aware and uh, fulfilled and happy because they consciously chose to do things instead of just passively, you know, oh, I just do it because I, they do it because they understand. Oh, that makes sense. Unlike woke people who are like, they never, you know, they never shut up about anything. They're always unhappy. Yes, exactly. These people were fulfilled. They were happy. They got over their problems and went on with their lives. Unlike woke people, I was, ooh, I got to find a new problem to complain about. Ooh, ooh, my coffee beans aren't organic enough or some bullshit. Yes, yes, I get it. And, um, oh, well, what else? So we like the movie overall because it's it's optimistic. Yes, it's an optimistic movie and we need optimistic stuff because there's so much, you know, crappy stuff that can depress you. So the movie made us happy. And um, would you say that when they became the characters became self-aware that it was kind of like the Matrix, you know, waking up? Yes, yes, it reminded me of that. So I could say that the bar the Barbie movie was a little bit derivative yes a little bit derivative but otherwise we liked it so that's fine and uh based on that that is why we shit standing up because we freely choose to do so not because the patriarchy or dominant social discourse says we have to we'll shit the way we want and it's more efficient for us to shit standing up and you can feel free to copy us like the people on queen street or do whatever you want but um that's our analysis of the barbie movie so Leave us alone about it, all right? Yes, yes. Would you um like to check another email? No, no, I think that's enough. Let's just enjoy um Thanksgiving. So, happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Gang, gang, bugger off. Mm -hmm. Like and subscribe.